So patient, we thought about the theatre environment, we thought about us um, in terms of what we're going to contaminate or drop into the wound. Obviously, there's a couple of other things we need to think about. So antibiotic prophylaxis, important to think about if we're trying to prevent surgical site infections. If we're using antibiotics, it's as an added benefit. It's not going to be any substitute. We can't ignore everything else we've spoken about and just whack this patient full of antibiotics because we know these antibiotics aren't going to penetrate where we've not got blood supply, etc. from there. And if we're talking about prophylaxis, we're talking about using antibiotics in a very different way. We're not treating an infection. Prophylaxis, we're going to use high concentrations of antibiotics to try and stop an infection or try and help stop an infection from happening. So we still need all the good normal aseptic techniques, etc. Um, but what we're doing is giving an antibiotic to try and kill contamination before it gets established within the wound as well. So we may think about that um, where we know we're going to encounter bacteria. So we said our example, if we're taking a uh, foreign body out of a small intestine, we know there's going to be some contamination. It should be controlled. We're going to have laparotomy pads, bowel clamps. It shouldn't be enormous spillage and everything, but we are going to encounter bacteria during that procedure. So in terms of antibiotic prophylaxis, we're going to give antibiotics before the contamination happens so that we try and kill the contamination with our high levels of antibiotics before it becomes established. We may also do it in things that are clean surgery, so surgeries where we don't expect to encounter bacteria. We're not cutting into a bladder, we're not cutting into a, a small intestine, etc. Um, but maybe something where we're going to put implants in, so fracture repairs, orthopaedic surgery, etc. We've got an implant, a big implant in an object, and if that becomes infected, it's going to be catastrophic, it's going to get infection, we're going to have to take the implants back out again. So some clean surgeries, we're going to use antibiotic prophylaxis beforehand. So the important thing is if you do your surgery, you take the patient back to a kennel and you jab it with Sinulox before it gets infected, it's not antibiotic prophylaxis. The antibiotic has to be there before the contamination occurs. Because inevitably during surgery, no matter how careful we are, when you cut with a scalpel or scissors, you're going to create small amounts of necrotic tissue, you're going to create a hematoma, bruising blood. What's got to happen is when you cause that damage, it's got to have effective levels of antibiotic within that damaged tissue. Because that jab of sinulox you do after the surgery is never going to penetrate that tissue. It's got no blood supply. The small amount of necrotic tissue you've caused, the hematoma you've caused, the bruising you've caused has got no blood supply. So jabbing something afterwards is not going to get in. It's not antibiotic prophylaxis. You've just increased the risk of getting a resistant bacterial infection within your wound. So antibiotic prophylaxis, we're usually giving an antibiotic intravenously 30 to 45 minutes before you think the contamination is going to happen. And it's a high level, it's a high concentration of antibiotic in it. So if we're doing that fracture repair as we cut through the muscle, um, as we drill through the bone, when it bleeds, that blood, that hematoma, that necrotic tissue has got an effective level of antibiotic in that will kill bacteria it meets. Because it's never getting in there afterwards if you don't have it in beforehand as well. So, we're usually going to use an antibiotic that's going to be effective against what we expect to encounter. So we're trying to keep things as narrow as we can from that point of view. So we think usually the bacteria that are going to cause us a problem, the bacteria that are present on an animal's skin, um, you know, in terms of what's going to get pushed into a wound. So things like staph, streps, carinibacterium. Um, so effective against those would be something like an intravenous cephalosporin or clavulanate potentiated amoxicillin. So augmenting. Um, or things like Zinoseph, you know, available as intravenous preparations to give to these patients as well. Occasionally, we may tailor things elsewhere. If we were operating around the rectum, if you were operating on the colon, perineal, hernias, anal glands, etc., you can anticipate the, the bacteria you're going to encounter are going to come from the gastrointestinal tract from the large colon. So it's going to be gram-negative bacteria, there's going to be anaerobes. So in that instance, we might use something like metronidazole as well as or instead of at that point. So we're using things logically, we're thinking what's going to cause a problem in terms of contamination, therefore what antibiotic am I going to use, and it's got to be there before it happens. And then usually we're going to stop afterwards. Um, so if we've got the antibiotic prophylaxis there, arguably, again, this is to suit your scenario, there's going to be no advantage in terms of continuing that for the next four or five days. Because if you got it right during your fracture repair, if you got it right during your cruciate surgery, you know, you've minimised the chance, you've minimised the risk, and giving antibiotics afterwards um, may or may not contribute to anything from there. So again, it's personal choice, it's going to be your practice policy. Do you stop? Um, so we usually give these, 
our routine is to give Zinosef 20 milligrams per kilogram um, 45 minutes before you operate or before you make the incision, then repeat every 90 minutes. And we usually, I re usually repeat every 90 minutes until the patient's recovered. Some people, as soon as the, patient, as the procedure's finished, the last stitches in, will say stop. Some people say, well, we put lots of metal in to carry on for the next three, four hours or something. What we usually do is, as um, soon as the patient's recovered from the anaesthetic, normothermic, normotensive, normal perfusion, is to stop the antibiotics at that point. 